and this one is 400 meter squared. Another good reason for putting stuff away is that in Spain, the truppers have just gone on straight. Uh, We're Stephen and Mags, and together with our three kids, Louis, Neve and Oliver, we're starting out on the biggest adventure of our lives, swapping city life for an off-grid homestead. After years of dreaming about making a change, we sold our house in the UK, packed up all our belongings, and made the 1,500 mile trip to southern Spain, with the hopes of creating the dream family home and a new life in the sun. Follow our story from the very beginning as we begin the journey of creating our off-grid home. Hi right, everybody, so we're back this week, a little bit different, starting off inside the house instead of outside the house in the garden where we normally are. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's 10 to 6, it's getting dark, I've just finished work and uh, we've got some preserving to do. So every Monday in our town we have a big market in the middle of town and they have big fruit and veg stalls. So we went yesterday, took advantage of that and stocked up on a load of fruit and vegetables. Mags has already started with some of the preserving and some of it's already in the freezer. Um, but what we're going to be doing is trying out some new tools that we bought to try to help with preparing and chopping vegetables etc and then bagging them and freezing these ones uh, we're going to be doing it a few different ways so i'll show you mags and what we've got so we're preserving mags no she's well preserved already um we've got a load of tomatoes really 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 hot chilies like to touch them and touch anywhere else in the body is a danger isn't it only if you stay only if you may. Yeah, we've got some carrots, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, peppers, and then some plums we're going to be turning into plum jam. Uh, some of this has already, or some of what we had, has already been chopped and put away in the freezer, especially courgettes and peppers. We've got a load of them already chopped and put away. But these are the ones we're going to be working on now, since it's too dark and, and cold, believe it or not, in Spain, to go and do anything outside. Um, we've got a new tool, and the new tool is this. It's this little chopper. We've seen it on someone else's channel when we were watching what they were doing for food preservation, etc. Uh, it's a little chopping uh, machine device, but it comes with loads of different attachments. So, one where you can put uh, an egg separator, this is, so you put your egg in, it collects the yolk and separates the whites. Uh, there is another part somewhere. Whop it. The little bit that goes on top. Oh yeah, it's in the cupboard. We don't need that, I don't think. Yeah, yeah we don't need to stay, but there's one that you can put on top for slicing potatoes, etc. And then there are all different blades that you can get for chopping julienne, things for uh, grating or zesting different vegetables. Uh, there's currently a slicer on top of this one, and then a dicer on the inside. And you get two different sizes with this one, so you can do really thin ones or big chunky ones. We're going to try and do the chunky ones. Uh, we've seen it on a number of different channels people are using it um, and it's, it's quite good isn't it? It's good, it makes light work of it really. You've used it already I've used it all, yeah yeah, I've used it today for the, the other stuff we put in the freezer and actually it was really good, it was okay. quick yeah. Yeah she used it, it was my, my man tool that I bought and she used it before me so. Your man tool but I'm in the kitchen, that makes no sense. Yeah well I think I can promise to the man. Do it first. Shall I do the carrots and you can... I've got the tool because that's basically you. I've got The man tool, look away if you're squeamish. The man tool, bleeding already. I need to go faster. So there we go, first four bags of carrots done, we've done two diced and two sliced uh, and actually it was quite quick, it's quite dangerous, I've sustained more wounds and injuries from just using the slicer, um, so yeah, first four bags of carrots done, we're going to wash the stuff and then move on to something else. <laughs> Right, 
So one of the reasons we're trying to lay out to store our own food and put stuff away is so that when we do grow stuff and it is grown in the garden outside that we know how to store it and keep it long term and that we're not having to eat a hundred tomatoes fresh in one week and that we know how to be able to put stuff away which is why we're buying little tools like this to see if that's something that will help us and being able to put this stuff away. Another good reason for putting stuff away is that in Spain the truffles have just gone on strike. Um, so they went on strike in March and actually come to the point where they stopped exporting or transporting dairy stuff around the country so it affects the supply chain so being a bit more prepared and being able to put your own food away even if it's not stuff we've grown ourselves but stuff we bought from local farmers stuff that hasn't traveled miles to get to us just seems really sensible to learn how to do so we're going to try and crack on with the rest of this and then we pick it up at the end and show you what we've managed to, to put away <laughs> Well, we've moved to the kitchen and now I'm going to be doing some tomatoes to freeze, whole tomatoes to freeze that we can then use in things like bolognese or when we want to make any type of sauce or pizza sauce or stuff like that that you can blend down. But I want to do them without skins. So I've watched a few videos on how we should do them because this is the first time we're doing them. And um, what they suggest is that you score the bottom of them like this because once you put them in the water then it makes it easier to peel the skin from there afterwards so it should lift up quite easily. Um, I've tested it, we can get about three tomatoes in a litre bag and we can get about five to six tomatoes in a five litre bag so we're going to do different sizes for different recipes that call for different amounts so what we need to do is take the tomato when the water's boiled, it's just on the boil now you plop it in there, you leave it in for between 30 to 60 seconds put it in there, take it out of there, I'll bring this over and you put it in ice water. Now, we haven't got ice cubes, but we have got ice packs and we've got a few of them, so the water is really cold from that. You put them in, leave them in for a few seconds to cool down and then the skin should start to peel. You can peel the skin off and then they're ready to be put in the bag and to be frozen. So, that's the setup. Tomatoes, hot water, cold water and the soup from tonight's tea, which uh, everyone's still eating in the living room. So, yeah, I'm gonna just wait for the water to boil and then give this a go for the first time. So here goes for the first one. I'm gonna put maybe three in at the same time and then leave them for 30 seconds. Another one, I'll just see if these peel. And look at that. So the skin is peeling. Ooh, looks messy. So it worked, that's the first one, peels, first peel tomato, I'll put it back in there for a minute. Oh this one's gone really soft, so the longer you leave it in the cold water it must come off easier. So, oh it's gone all the way around. First bag of tomatoes, skinless tomatoes. Right, done then. We've just sliced them and we're going to get them into the freezer now. 
We have still got some more tomatoes to do, but we're just going to dice them ones. And we've got peppers, chilies, butternut squash to do. They're again going to be diced. Um, we're not going to film that, we'll just show you the results at the end. And then last but not least is our plums. And we're going to make plum jam out of this. We've never done that before either. But hopefully that'll be as successful as they look to be as well. Morning everyone, so we're starting a little bit different today, we're out in the car, we're going to take you with us on a little road trip, we've got some house viewings booked in, um, some that we've seen close to where we're staying now in the rental property, because we really, really like the area, so hopefully one of these houses will be the one, um, and yes I have had a haircut, so look different than the last time we're on, but yeah we'll take you with us, we'll show you hopefully some of what we're seeing today and, and hopefully find it interesting. So we're back at the same estate agents we've been to before and we've had a few comments on social media and on the YouTube channel saying uh, oh you've done so much to the property and, and you know why do you want to move? Uh, we want to move really because it, it's rented at the end of the day and we would like to develop things further than they are now uh, and we can't because we don't own it. So uh, we are still looking for somewhere to live and most of the stuff that we've done on the property is all just temporary stuff. Yeah, permanent that we can't take with us apart from the vegetables in the ground uh, but it, some ingenious inventions to take then but yeah but i mean it'd be months before the sale goes through and we're in a position to move anyway and if we buy somewhere that needs a bit of doing up we've got the security and knowing that we can stay in the rental property for as long as we want until we're ready to move so hopefully we'll get to eat the vegetables we've planted and we'll still be there in time but yeah i'm looking forward to going and seeing a few different properties we've yeah. just been in to see the estate agent She's coming out to meet us now and then we're going in her car with her and she's going to take us to the properties. Uh, we had four to see today but we've just bumped one off the list because we went to see uh, where about you were yesterday and the but one the yesterday was, was too far out wasn't it? Miles away yeah. wasn't it? We've lived far out from like amenities before and it never worked out so and especially for the kids more so is that you know giving them a bit of independence so we've bumped the furthest one away off, off the list yeah and we've got um, three left to see three today left to see. Uh, we won't do a full tour with you around each one we'll be give you a little snippet of what each one sort of looks like and and favorite points on them sorry about the wind So this is the first one we've come to. Just take it in and take it around it quickly. So into the hallway. Uh, this is living room. It's got an open fireplace with the flue, which is behind the, the board that's in there now. And then straight across to kitchen, diner. I mean, it's a good sized kitchen. Uh, it's a very good sized kitchen, actually. So that's the kitchen diner, and then here's Max. Uh, a back door which leads out onto the back. Bathroom, and the bath and a shower. And then um, the only issue that we've got is it says it comes with solar, and that is the limit of the solar system. So we definitely need more solar putting in. I mean, it's got two fuses for the whole house. 
Uh, there's no inverter or anything like that, so yeah, the solar would definitely need seeing too. Um, then on this corridor, which leads back out to the main corridor like that, got bedroom one, which is okay. Bedroom two, uh, and I'll just show you, a lot of the rooms have got damping as well, which is quite common in Spain, but you can see they, the others have been painted over slightly, so you can't tell as much. And there's the solar panels for the house, which wouldn't run anything. Um, and then the master bedroom, which is there. It's a really nice room, actually. Again, it's got damp, which has been painted over across the wall. Um, yeah, really nice. And patio doors leading out onto the patio, and I'll just show you through here. It's got lovely views again. Uh, nice paved patio area. And back through. And back out to the main door. So, second house. Um, the owners are here, we're not going to get them on film, but uh, another good side this is a Spanish owned house, uh, very Spanish in style. Uh, another big long room. Uh, it's really quiet inside, we're much closer to the road in this one. Uh, so you can see, you might see traffic go past in a minute, but yeah, where that big building is, is a main road that's out there, so. Uh, probably closer to the road and civilization than we wanted to be, but it's a nice nice house it's, and the ceilings are all really high. Uh, take it around quickly. And then bathroom one is this room. It's got a double shower. And then long corridor. <laughs> I'll go in there last. Um, bedroom one, double bedroom. Uh, again, this one's a good size. I'm gonna take it there. And then bedroom two right across the hall. Um <laughs> down. Bathroom two, which is a really good size, and it's got a bath. Um and traditional Spanish B day. Yeah, nice size bathroom, it's nice and clean. Bedroom three. So this one's better than the fact that it's got four bedrooms in here. But the last house we went to see doesn't have four bedrooms, so we'd need to rejig it a little bit uh, in order to put a bedroom in. But the price was much cheaper of the last house. And then this is the fourth and final bedroom, which is a longer bedroom, not much wider, but a longer bedroom. And then I'll just take you, show you what Mike's is looking at. Um, this side looks out onto some fruit trees, uh, pomegranate trees, stuff like that. And then over to olives. And there are 40 olive trees outside. So good for making olive oil. Let's see if we can get a little shot of the kitchen and the garage. And then the owner's just gone outside, so we can film. Um, so this is the kitchen. Uh, a good sized kitchen. She's told us that, uh, well, it's, the, it's not the owner here, it's the owner's sister showing us around today. The owner actually doesn't live here anymore. Um, so it's wanting to leave everything that is in the house in the house. Um, not taking any furniture with her. You've got three fridges or two fridges and a, a big chest freezer. Uh, this is like a little pantry, which would be really good as a pantry. And then through into a garage, um, which could be used as a garage. Uh, it could be used, if we block that up, used as guest accommodation for people to come and stay in. And uh, there's options with this one, isn't it? I mean, we wouldn't necessarily need a garage. And then we're still to look in outside. There's a barbecue area, which I'll take you out to, and a casita outside, which is really good. So this is the outside little casita. There's a little outside kitchen area with a barbecue and, and sink. And then inside, a little shed be a great office needs a little bit of work but would be a great office and the electricity's out here and then now here baby just the water deposit store but it's not used anymore because 
I'm going to open this. There's a big shed on this side um, with uh, agricultural water, automated, it's done by this, automated watering system. But actually, this would probably be a good place for the solar setup to go as well for batteries, etc. Oh, next door, a new this is an office. We don't know. Yeah, it looks. It's good. And then another piece of land over there, which would be great for growing on. The only thing I'm not too keen on is the fact that the road is just right there. What about you, Mags? Yeah, I feel the same. It's the road that's a little bit close. And you could screen it off. There are, there are options. Yeah. Um, there are options of screening that whole thing. But so far, I think on the drive out, we'll see a little bit whether it is too close or yeah. whether it's... Ideal for the kids, I suppose, for access as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it'd be easy just to get on the road, and this road leads us back down to the main town. That's it, we're done. This one's particularly nice, it's got loads of trees on it already. It's got massive outbuildings right the way along, and then the house, which is pretty small compared to the rest of the buildings. Uh, it's even got a little coop ready for chickens. Yeah. So, on top of the fence bit of land that's there, this is also included up to where you can see uh, the tractor in the distance there and the olive trees. Um, and then it goes. I don't know if everybody in here goes all the way back around up to where you can see the stop sign up there. So, the last storage room we were in, which is down the bottom, was 200 meters squared. And this one is 400 meters squared. Uh, the whole place used to be a chicken farm before. So it's huge. Um, it's just massive. Yeah, lots of words. Bedroom one. A little tiny hallway. Bedroom two. So we're back for the house viewings, Maggie's just got chains because we're going out the garden. and she's just picked a shoe up or a belly to put on and what was in it? This ginormous, well not that ginormous but this scary looking spider, they'll never be let outside ever again. It had patterns on its back and everything, anyway. So for animal lovers out there we're sorry but it didn't last long did it? No, it might have met it near death with the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she just thoroughly checked them, make sure there's nothing else living in them. Um, we're just on our way round to the garden. So apologies if there's wind noise, it's been really windy lately and we have got a new mic with a new cover on it so it should be less but if there's noise, apologies. So house humans? Um, I'm not 100% really, I don't think right now on any of them. I do like two of them but yeah. I suppose there's one we definitely... Oh. I stand here after sun. Yeah so there's one definitely that we know wouldn't work for us because it's far too small. Yeah, the last one was too small. Yeah. Outbuildings were really big, but I think they were overwhelming because they're that big. Yeah, the, it's a it, farm. It's not a homestead, is it? No, it's, it was it was on the industrial scale, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? He was telling us he had ten thousand chickens in the in the one of the uh, the outbuildings. Like we definitely wouldn't be having ten thousand chickens. We're just pushing no. it, thinking about getting six. I'm pushing <laughs> three, thinking about a goat. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for. House number one, it was good, although the solar thing would need sorting. Yeah. And it also needs an extra bedroom, but we could maybe reconfigure the inside mm. of the house. That has got scope though, I think, that, yeah, you, wouldn't like that one, yeah, you wouldn't lose money on it if you did put those things in. Because right now it's at a good enough price that you would reap the rewards later on if you come to sell it. 
Yeah. The, o- the only thing with that is, is that the estate agent was telling us that it's not classified as a house as yet. It's classified as a nave or a nave. Um, so a warehouse effectively. Um, so they said there's work yeah. to do on the paperwork with that one. So that might take a bit longer, even if we were interested mm. in that. The second one, I really liked the inside of the house. I think we could do a lot to it. Mm. It's a high, it's the highest one, the highest price one out of all the ones we went to see. But I think the land might be a bit too small, especially when we've got lots of open space <laughs> like that here on the rental. Yeah. Um, I it's getting really think, dark. Let me move that way. Yeah. I just think that the second one you was put solar in and you would, you know, do all the things that you wanted to do. Yeah. You would never get that money back from it because it's already at its top of its price range. Yeah, it was already highly priced. It was. So. Um, don't get me wrong, it's, it's lovely and it's really well maintained. But I sort of like the diamonds in the roof, really like the, yeah, the, <laughs> the, one. the one that needs a little bit more work and something uh, but, you can put your own stamp on. I mean, for us, we've got to think about location because, I mean, if you don't know this because you're not in Spain, then one of the biggest usually is that there's, there's no public transport. Yeah. So there's one bus that comes on a Thursday at half mm. eight in the morning to take you to the market and bring you back at two o'clock. And that's the limit for for public transport. That's yeah. the priority in Spain is going to the market. <laughs> yeah, get, getting your fruit and vegetables in, having a little, a little chat and a little toast with someone and then coming home again. The siesta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, apart from that, there's no other public transport. So for us, taking kids back and forth, we've done it when we were in the, 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 the previous house, doing 20 minute trips back and forth to the school. And it's a nightmare, and especially now with cost of living and petrol prices going up and whatnot. Yeah. It makes sense to be a little bit closer to the things that we need for now, yeah. but for far enough away so that we're not right in the middle of town and that we are out in the countryside a bit like this. Yeah. So we're going to think on it. We're going to drive up and check the area out for the first one to see what it's like around mm-hmm. there, different ways you can get to the house and see how accessible it is. And then we'll have another thing on it, but we'll yeah. keep it updated anyway. Um, for now, we're standing outside the garden. We'll give you a little uh, update of what's been happening. Yeah, we'll give you a little update on what's growing, what's not. Um, we're going to check on our cameras because, as I said, it's been really windy. So let me turn you round and I'll take you with me. You're coming in, Mags. Mm-hmm. So it's been really windy and everything's getting blown to smithereens. So all the cardboard that we put on top has blown away. So we need to get onto that and fix it back up again. Uh, I can't see any carrots germinating as yet. Um, and we have tried to keep it wet and it's been raining so i'm not sure what's going on whether they will come up or not oh no look there is i don't know if you can see that on camera where's my finger there's little tiny ones starting to sprout and there's a few others so we might have some look actually they might be growing yeah there's a few little sprouts coming up Megs. yeah although the ground is dry it has not compacted since the rain hasn't it yeah so we've tried. I mean, it seems soft underneath actually the ground, but as soon as the sun gets it, it's baking it, isn't it? Yeah, so we need to cover that back up. Diego is out of his fenced in area and living his best life running around. Look at him. He's trying to work out how to get in because the little thing's still on the, the gate. Um, and then in this one, uh, potatoes. No potatoes have popped through as yet. Um, but we're going to cover it over again, get some more straw, uh, give them a good water. But again it's been raining loads garlic's coming on great so getting bigger and stronger more leaves on it you can see them there again the grass off that hay is coming back terrible so yeah we really need to think of something else to do and i think long term if we start making our own mulch we're desperate for a, a, a shredder or something then we can use that instead um these are the turnips the nabos uh, nice and big uh, and quite pleased with them actually they've come out really well so they're the nabos uh, carrots these way you can see again there's a lot of grass but the carrots are coming to there let me lift that up oh there we go so the carrots are coming in between all of that and you can just about make a row out of them up there they're the colored carrots um, heirloom carrots, I think they are. And then we go over to this one. We're getting munched still a little bit by grasshoppers and whatnot. The middle of the bed seems to be pretty empty. Uh, there's a few that have survived down this end. But I just think it, it teaches us the next time we grow that actually covering them in a nest saves them from the beard, which is what we want to do. These are onions at this end. Um, the network for the birds 
Uh, the hay is no good because it creates all this. Although composting, it's a bit of, a bit of green to put in with the brown. Um, but I think we need a net with the small, smaller holes in it to stop grasshoppers. Uh, these are all doing well. So we've got broccoli, uh, kale, Brussels sprouts, cauliflowers. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing well. Some of them, like these, are getting, are getting a really decent size. Let me see if I can step over that. Yeah, some of them are getting a really good size. So I'm quite pleased with them. And then down into purple cabbage. Um, and what I've noticed actually from the straw that we've put on, there's quite a few nettles. And we've been reading up about things like nettle tea and, and using it as a remedy rather than as a weed. So that's a brief tour of where we're up to. What we're going to do is crack on and try and sort out the mess. Oh, Mike's a star still ready, look. She put some of the cardboard back on. Just needs to finish this and, and then give it a good drenching again to make sure it's all wet. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together Well, the last job for today is we're going to make some plum jam. So I'm just sterilising the jars and they've been washed already and now they're in there to boil and sterilise. One's going really good, the other one's just coming up to the boil. And I'm going to get on with chopping all the plums up, ready to go in another pan to make the plum jam. So it's been boiling away for some time now and now all the, the plums have broken down um, and it's reduced loads as well. So now I'm just about to add the sugar and I need to add one and a half kilograms of sugar. So one and a half of these. Now I know that seems like a lot and you think, wow, that's a lot of sugar to put in it. But you can't reduce the amount of sugar that you put in it or you're not supposed to because the sugar actually helps to preserve what's in there. Um, putting less sugar in it could make it less shelf stable so it won't last as long as with less sugar in it. It also helps it to set as well. Um, so we don't need to add any pectin or any gelatin into it because there should be enough pectin in the plums themselves because they're high in pectin and with the skins on too the skins contain a lot of pectin so it should help it set. So let's add this in. Got a lovely like deep red cousin to put that in. Let me bring it over so you can see. Isn't that a lovely deep red colour in there? It's gonna make a lovely colour jam once it's done. So it's been blended and now we need to leave it on a roll and boil, keep staying at the bottom so it doesn't stick. Um, but a roll and boil for about five minutes. And then we're going to do a little test to see if it's going to set and then we can take it out. So it's going lovely. The last little thing to add in is 30 mils of lemon juice and then that helps like activate the pectin and help it set. So it's all blended lovely. The last little bit is lemon juice and once that's all mixed in, it's boil for another few minutes and we'll do a test um, to see whether or not it's thick enough to set. And you do that with a cold plate, so we put two plates in the freezer already to make them cold. 
and take a little smear of the, the jam, put it on the plate. And if the jam, when you pull your finger along it after it's got cold, starts to wrinkle, then it's ready to set. It's called the wrinkle test. So I've got as far as doing eight jars of jam and there's a little bit left and I want to try something a little bit different. Now, the last part, so we've got eight jars of jam, two full pots of chilli jam, and one little half one that we'll put on the fridge and use now. Um, the last little bit is I've cleaned the jars up already, but I need to clean around the seal. A little bit of vinegar, make sure it doesn't go in. And I'm just gonna clean around the top of the seal like this to make sure it's nice and clean and that the seal can stick to it properly when we put the lid on. So, the hot. Well that's it for this week, I think that's all we've got time for. Really pleased we've managed to successfully make some jam. Uh, we'll keep it updated on the houses and whatever we decide and um, also keep it updated on the, the garden and how that's going too. So just like to say again thanks to everyone who's liked and subscribed, everyone that leaves comments for us, so really appreciate it. And until the next time, hasta luego.